And Dragon Piercer isn't as effective on Arzros as, let's say, Mizutsune or Arathian. I'm going to show you how to use the bow efficiently, Monster Hunter Rise, and we're going to start right now. And before we get into the rest of the video, if you want to learn how to use the bow more efficiently and effectively, Monster Hunter Rise, fully charged Dragon Pierce that like and subscribe button. I am really loving this game, but I'll always have a soft spot for my first Monster Hunter experience. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. What's your first Monster Hunter experience? Put it in the comments below. Let's get into it. When you're starting out in your Monster Hunter adventure, they give you this bow. Kimura Iron Bone 1, the attack is 60, yada, 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 but we're not going to focus on this weapon power. We're going to focus on how to use this weapon properly, because that's where the true power comes in. We're look at their charge shot list right above me we have level one rapid one level two rapid one and level three rapid run what these arrow shots mean are when you fire your shot you have a certain amount of arrows with a certain shot pattern and a certain trajectory i'll show you what i mean remember this list from before level one rapid level one rapid to level two level one level one to level two notice how the level one has one arrow and level two has two arrows for every charge shot level the attack will increase even though level one and level two have the same type of rapid shot the second charge is going to do more damage for example first charge second charge the rapid shot's going to be your medium range firing shot you can tell the appropriate range for your shot by pressing the zl button if the reticule in the center is orange you're good to go if i get too close and the orange is gone then I've gone too close. If I get too far and the orange is gone, then I've gone too far. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a level two at the appropriate distance. Level two too close. Level two too far. What I love about the too far example is that there's an audio cue thanks to the sound designer that gives you further information that you were just too far, get a little closer. It sounds like two sticks hitting each other. See, much different sound. Then there are other bows with a different shot type, like this bone gun bow with spread shot, or like this iron bow with pierce shot. The spread shot is a multi-pronged attack that spreads in a fan-like area. It does not have a minimum range. You could be literally be right up to the monster. As you see, the reticule is still orange, but the maximum range of a sweet spot is still a little close, as you see here. So that means the spread bow is more of a close range combat type of weapon. You have to be pretty familiar with the monster to get all close up and personal with it and not be afraid of getting hit. That being said, melee for the beginning is really good as well. I'd advise using a lot of melee swipes for Kizuchi or Arzuros. Next, we have our Pierce Shot. The Pierce Shot is the longest shooting arrow in your arsenal. It shoots one arrow and hits multiple times through the target. So if the monster is larger or longer, this is going to hit several times. If the monster is small, like the Izuchi, you're not going to get that many hits. So Pierce Bow works best for larger monsters. The minimum range of the sweet spot is further than the rest, but the maximum is pretty far. But note that even if you're in the sweet spot this far, the first hit is going to be in the sweet spot, but the rest of the hits that continue through the monster won't be. You can hear this through the audio. You don't want to be maximum distance, but you can be farther away in a more safe region. It's a good weapon to party up with because then you can stay away from all the Blade Master's abilities and combos so that you can interfere and still get a lot of damage off. So we have Rapid, which is more of a focusing damaging shot. Then we have Spread Shot, which is more of a close range in your face type of shot, which is also good for small monsters. Melee is also good for small monsters. Then we have Pierce, which is a more of a long range tactical type of combat, which is used for large monsters and great in parties. And a great thing about these abilities is that you can use Dragon Piercer no matter what shot you have. But Dragon Piercer is pretty situational. And here's the Dragon Piercer against Izuchi. I see it's not as effective as one would think. And Dragon Piercer isn't as effective on Arzros as, let's say, Mizutsune or Arathian. Let's go over coatings. To put on coatings, you take your weapon out with X and you press X again to apply the coating. To scroll through the coatings, you hold down the left shoulder button and you can press X and B to scroll up or down the list kind of like a rolodex for those who remember rolodexes in the training area you can find a description of what the coatings do on the bottom left of the screen for close range coating arrows that deal more damage to close range targets but reduces maximum range so the close range coatings you want to make sure that you're close enough because right here i'm not close enough for close range coatings but i am close enough for my rapid shots so close range coatings are great if you want to get up to the monster you have a spread shot bow or if you want to melee Power coatings do something similar. An arrow coating that increases the attack power of arrows. So here's a level three shot without power coatings. Here's a level three shot with power coatings. The next coatings are gonna apply status effects. With this shot, you wanna make sure you use a level two or level three shot to apply these coatings to the monster so that you can be more effective and efficient when applying these status ailments. For example, poison coating, an arrow coating that applies poison effects to arrows. If I use the level one shot only, it will take 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. 
It took me 38 shots to get the poison off. I use level two or higher, it's going to take one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12, 12 shots. 12 shots is about normal. So when you're applying coatings, make sure you at least hold down the trigger to get at least the second charge shot or dash chance into charge shot and you can do all these power shots and other stuff. And if you didn't know, you can melee for a similar effect without using any coatings. Then you have paralysis coatings, an arrow coating that applies paralysis effect to the arrows. This makes it really easy to open up for a dragon piercer, like this. Then we have sleep coatings, an arrow coating that applies sleep effects to arrows. When you see the monster asleep, it will have bubbles and the music will stop playing. Go ahead and pull out your large barrel bombs or larger. Someone with the biggest weapon needs to attack it, or if you have no big weapons, let's say like you have dual blades or a sword and board or insect glaive or lances, go ahead and pull out dragon piercer, fully charged for the extra damage. Blast coatings are similar. You can get up to three procs of blast coatings. Blast coatings are a damage dealing coating, which are really nice. An arrow coating that applies explosive powder to arrows. So this is a status effect that builds up to an explosion by like five to seven arrows. Again, it's more effective if you use level two charge shots or higher, because then you can get about three explosions out of your 20 coatings. See, that was four hits. Four hits, I got an explosion. And then every proc after the first time is gonna take a little longer. Now we have exhaust coatings. These are interesting. An arrow coating that applies a fatigue inducing fluid to arrows. So you can just hit the monster wherever you want to just kind of make it tired and it'll move slower, or have a lesser ability to attack you. That's like if a monster put water blight on you and you don't have stamina anymore. But the best part about these coatings are if you aim at the face and only the face, it will get knocked out by the end of the coatings like that it's pretty useful if you're skillful enough to only hit the face with every single coating you may be wondering hey boogie boogie i still don't feel really comfortable about doing these bow combo things and dash dash what is all this about don't worry got you covered if you want to use the bow more efficiently and effectively i have a video for you right here thank you for watching another boogie boogie video stay healthy stay strong catch you next time